Hey guys, welcome back to A-Level Lessons. In this video, we're going to be looking at a very, 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 very short video. Um, just a bit of a preamble to what resources is going to be all about for your team 2, um, covering your resources, right, basically. So we're going to be looking at what the nature of resources uh, in terms of its classification. Okay, so how do we classify resources and the resource availability, right? So how do we determine if a resource is considered um, of uh, a certain level of availability, uh, availability to us? So the classification of resources, right, we look at four different categories. So firstly, we have non-renewable resources. So non-renewable resources, as it suggests, is minerals that are basically finite. Okay, we're looking at resources that are finite. They basically take forever to either form or regenerate, okay, or they cannot even be regenerated in the first place, right? They are non-renewable at all. So on the other hand, renewable resources, we look at potentially resources that can be regenerated, Right, even if we use them today in the short run or maybe in the long run over a certain period of time we're able to use this resource again for the same purpose so we learn more about renewable resources uh, actually in team 3 okay, we cover your alternative energy sources those are a bunch of renewable uh, energy sources that have been placed in your syllabus so some of them can be exploited to exhaustion if overused. So this is just for you guys to take note that some resources, even though they may be renewable, right, if we make full exploitation and we keep using them, right, we run the chance, the risk of them also running out in the long run. Right, we have perpetual resources as well. Perpetual basically means that, they, that they can be depleted temporarily, but it is always going to be there. Right? For example, air. When we look at the oxygen, you look at the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it's always going to be there, right? Because we have plants, we have humans, right? And uh, in general, the atmosphere is just going to always contain the this amount of air. So although they may be depleted temporarily, right, because of people intaking um, all of this air, in the long run, you realize that the air is always going to be replenished, right, via the various cycles. So that's perpetual, right? It is perpetual in the long run. Uh, potential resources looks at resources that are known to exist, but they have not been used or discovered formally. So they have a potential to be harnessed, they have a potential to be utilized, but we haven't actually used it at all. Right? We understand of its potential only. So we look at the resource availability. We have also another four different categories. We have the proven reserve, we have conditional, we have hypothetical, and we have speculative. Right, so proven reserve, okay, basically means that it is proven, right? When I say that, um, when I ask you to prove a math equation or I ask you to prove that something exists, it means that it is already there, right? You're just proving to me. So these are deposits that have already been discovered and they are known to be extractable under current demand, price and technological conditions. A clear example would be, you look at the case of diamonds, right? Diamonds is a proven reserve because they are known to be in certain parts of, let's say, Africa, and they can be extracted, right? There are firms which have the uh, machinery that is required to extract these diamonds and value add to them. Right? So this is a proven reserve. A conditional reserve looks at deposits that have been discovered by not, uh, but they are not economically feasible to work okay? at the current price levels and technology, meaning that they require a certain condition. Right? They are conditional. They require a certain condition, they require a certain type of technology, they require a certain amount of labor, they require a certain price for it to be worthwhile to actually extract these resources. Right? So these are deposits that we have already found, but maybe at this current stage, we don't have the necessary technology, the monetary means to actually extract these resources. Hypothetical, right? when we say that, uh, when I ask you to form a hypothesis, Right, it means that these are deposits that are expected. Right, you are expecting to find something. You are expecting a certain result. Right, but they are only partially developed. Right, they are not actually fully um, something that we have explored. It is not 
known to us yet. Okay, it is still a hypothesis. It's still hypothetical. I mean that there is a chance it may exist. There's a chance that uh, it does exist, and we may not be able to fully develop it, right? Or there's a chance that it may not even exist at all. So it's a hy- hypothetical reserve. So similar to speculative, but speculative looks at more on based on speculation, right? We're making a wild guess. Hypothetical means that we likely have something to work around with. There has been some clues, some form of evidence. Speculative means that there isn't even much evidence to begin with, right? But potential resources found. So this may actually lose its speculative status, right? In the, in the event that it doesn't even exist at all, or in the event that it does exist, right? We can it can become a conditional or proven resource. Um, so when you look at speculative, you are looking at making a speculation. You're making a educated guess. Okay, you're making a guess. Maybe this resource does exist. Maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe it exists somewhere in Africa. Maybe it exists somewhere in Antarctica. Right? It is something that you are speculating about. So these are the four various resource availabilities, right? If it's how we classify them in geography. So exam requirements just understand the four various classification of resources as well as the different types of reserves when right? looking at the resource availability. It's been a very, very short lecture. Right, because this is really a very, very simple part. It's just a preamble to what we're going to be learning when it comes to resource appraisal, extractive industries, a lot of these other things that we're going to be looking at in the future. So just to take note that this is something that you can just uh, have it at the back of your head in ever, if ever you need to mention that a certain resource is you know, a proven resource, a conditional resource, uh, or, or in, in, in a conditional reserve, feel free to just list it out. Right, so if you did learn something and you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like as well as to subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. And if you have any questions, likewise, you can leave it in the comment section below and I will answer them as soon as possible. If not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.